Our final session today is the ultimate finale and much awaited for and is on the first Hindi work of fiction to win the bigger prize as we know it. Comparable to Rashdi's Midnight's Children, her style creates a new language in literature. Her understanding of partition is almost at par with Kushwan Singh's train to Pakistan. A completely serious author in a world overshadowed by publicity, our salutes to you may be four years late, but are finally here. We welcome Gitanjali Shri in conversation with Makaran Paranjbe. So all good things have to come to an end. And we are at literally the finale of the Kushwan Singh Literature Festival of 2022. But in a sense, we've saved the best for the last because this is a very important book, Ret Samadhi. I'm privileged to be here with Gitanjali Ji, whom I've known for many more years than I care to mention. And uh, here is the English translation by Daisy Rockwell. Let's remember that it's the translation which has got the booker. They still don't have a system where works in languages other than English, uh, maybe Arabic there's a booker, but they, I don't think they have a booker where, or maybe it's a shared booker of the original and, and the translation. But uh, before we plunge into the book, I did want to go back to the memory of Kushwan Singh, who has inspired this festival. Yesterday I mentioned that uh, there was a lot more to him. He was a personality larger than life. His joke books are still more popular than his literary works. But the important thing is we should go back to Kushwan Singh, the writer. We mentioned earlier Train to Pakistan, which was like a foundational text for the partition industry, I should call it, literary industry. And it ends with a sacrifice, if you remember the book, where uh, uh, a kind of ruffian, uh, a Sikh ruffian, sacrifices his life for his Muslim beloved. This book also has a sacrifice, but we'll come back to that in a moment. What I really wanted to say is that Kushwan Singh needs to be taken seriously as a writer. And the book that I think is really outstanding and path-breaking is Delhi, where the protagonist is a hermaphrodite who represents, in a sense, the checkered history of what has become India's capital. Uh, so remembering Kushwan Singh and uh, also congratulating both his son Rahul Singh and Nilufar Bilimoria ji, let's begin this session. Uh, yesterday when I uh, met uh, Gitanjali another time, she narrated an anecdote. I want to begin with that. So she said, uh, you know, someone came up to me and said, uh, you look a lot like Gitanjali Shri. <laughs> So what I want to say is that the idea of Gitanjali Shri has become bigger than Gitanjali Shri, which is a wonderful thing. But I want to add a caveat. It's really unfortunate that till she won the Booker, that too in translation, nobody recognized her. You know, her book was published in 2018 and the country woke up to its importance only when it was awarded a foreign prize which shows how deeply colonized we are and also how until a book makes it into English, it doesn't count for anything among the literati and the chatterati, you know. And this is an unfortunate thing, but we have to accept it for what it is and then uh, go back to this book, the Hindi book, because I believe there's a Zameen Asman ka farak, Hindi or Angrezi mein, or ek tarah se kaha jaye to ye Hindi Hindi nahi hai, jo Hindi hum aajkal bolte sunte hai. Mai isko kehta hon, ye ek unpartition zubaan hai. And after Krishna Sopti, I haven't read a book which uh, in a way recreates language the way uh, Gitanjali does. So a great work of literature is measured not only by its thematic gravity or gravitas, but by what it does to the language. So. I'm going to invite Gitanjali to read a passage, uh, both from uh, the Hindi original and the English. But I want to start by once again emphasizing what an important book this is. In fact, 
it may be the book of the century. The century is still very young. We hope many more good books come out in Hindi. But it has the makings of a very, very uh, great book, which will last a long time. And I haven't been uh, as excited by, a, you know, original work in Hindi uh, as this book for a very long time. The last time I, I felt something important had happened was Alka Sarogi's book, Calcutta Via Bypass. Kali Kali Katha Via, uh, via Bypass, exactly. And this is also a kind of postmodern text, but we'll come back to these points uh, later. But I don't want to typecast this book. This is, you can't call it women's writing, this writing, that writing. It's a really major book. And I guess after Nirmal Varma, again, comparisons are odious. I'm not making comparisons or making any uh, generalizations. I'm just saying a very important Hindi writer has arrived. And please, let's give her a big hand. And now, before I invite Gitanjali, I want to ask one little question. How many people have actually read the book? In Hindi, please, in Hindi, I'm not expecting more than four hands, and I'm absolutely right. Chalo, you count. I give you. Aapko pass kar diya maine. But yehi mushkil hai aajkal. Hum padh nahi paate, you know. And a book, the book has become an accessory. So let's break that barrier. Uh, and let's please invite Gitanjali ji to read a passage and draw us into the heart of this extraordinary narrative. Please. Thank you, Makrand. First of all, I want to say two things to you. First of all, I want to tell you that I am happy to be here today that I have got the opportunity to come here and get the opportunity to come here. और नीलोफर और राहुल सिंह जी आप लोगों ने इसरार किया और मैं मानना चाहती थी और बहुत पैक्ड प्रोग्राम्स थे उसके बीच में भी मैंने मुझे लगा कि नहीं मैं यहाँ जरूर आना चाहती हूँ और मैंने वक्त निकाला मैं आपको बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया कहती हूँ मेरे लिए ये जगह बहुत अजीज है मैं कसौली पंद्रह बीस साल पहले बार बार आती थी आईवी लॉज जो आपके क्लब से के पास है वहाँ हम लोग थिएटर वर्कशॉप्स करते थे और एक हम लोग का ग्रुप था आर्टिस्ट्स और राइटर्स और इंटेलेक्चुअल्स हम लोग मिल के वहाँ पर हम लोगों ने अपने कुछ नाटक वगैरह तैयार किए तो बहुत सुंदर यादें हैं उसके अलावा खुशवंत सिंह जी से जुड़ा है ये लिट फेस्ट वो मेरे लिए बहुत गौरव की बात है खुशवंत जी के हम लोग जबरदस्त एडमायरर्स थे और उन्होंने कितने अच्छे से पहचाना था the place of irreverence and humour in art and literature and social criticism I don't know how well that will go down today with too many people but I think we really really do admire admired him and he inspired us and I'm very glad to be associated with this Lit Fest. I'm very happy Makrand is here to talk because I've written the book, he's going to talk. We've uh, made a deal. But Makrand, I want to give you one or two things from the beginning. I want to give you a lot of things. I forgot that you have said a lot of things, so you will remain. मुझे लगता है कि ये जरूरी है पता ना ऐसा सही नहीं है कि रेत समाधि तभी पहचानी गई है जब वो अंग्रेजी में आई है और बुकर उसको मिला है ये बात सही है कि बुकर के मिलने के बाद उसको एक दूसरी तरह की विजिबिलिटी एक दम से मिल गई जो होता है अंग्रेजी की ये जगह है आप बिल्कुल सही कह रहे हैं लेकिन हम लोग अपने अपने छोटे और बड़े दायरे में भी चीज़ें हमारे होती रहती हैं और वहाँ पे इस किताब को पहचान जब ये निकली है तब से मिलनी शुरू हुई थी कृष्णा सोपती जैस मेरी जो बिल्कुल गुरुजन हैं लेखकों में डॉयन ऑफ हिंदी लिटरेचर कृष्णा सोपती ने इसको बिल्कुल शुरू में ही इसको पढ़ा और इसके निकलने के दो चार महीने के अंदर एंड शी रोट परहैप्स हर लास्ट बुक रिव्यू and she said that this is a book मतलब इसके बारे में बहुत उन्होंने ऐसी चीजें 
बोली कि बहुत मुझे बढ़ावा मिलता है याद करके भी और उन्होंने ये कहा मुझसे कि जल्दी में मत रहना बोली कि कुछ इसके बारे में लोगों ने कहना शुरू किया मैंने कहा नहीं धीरे धीरे लोग पढ़ रहे हैं तो बोली कि इट्स अ बिग बुक जल्दी नहीं इसको कोई पढ़ेगा एंड डोंट वरी इसको लोग धीरे धीरे पढ़ेंगे धीरे धीरे पहचानेंगे सो आई थिंक इट्स नॉट फेयर टू से दैट नथिंग वॉज हैपनिंग टू इट टिल इंग्लिश केम इन टू द सीन बट ऑफकोर्स इंग्लिश हैज़ दैट position and naturally it gets a different prominence the book came out in french translation an ek excellent french translation before the english but zahir hai ek french circle ke bahar bahut kam log us baat ko jante hain angrezi mein aane se angrezi ki duniya mein jo is samay jagah hai jitna uska bolbala hai aur phir booker ke mil jane se isko ek alag mukam mil gaya तो ये छोटी सी बात थी पर मैं कहना चाहती हूँ कि अपनी जगह इसकी आ, कहीं कहीं मतलब एक क्षेत्र में इसने बना ली बनानी शुरू कर दी थी और और क्षेत्रों में भी बनाएगी अंग्रेज़ी में जो होगा वो बिल्कुल दूसरे पैमाने का होगा सही है एक और आपने बात कही उस पर मैं बहुत ज़्यादा नहीं बोलूँगी लेकिन मुझे लगता है कि वी शुड बी केयरफुल वेन वी से दिस कि ये आपने शायद कहा कि दो अलग किताबें हैं ऐसा आपने कुछ कहा कि जमीन जमीन आसमान का अंतर है माफ़ करिए जमीन आसमान का अंतर नहीं है आप किताब को पढ़िए डेजी ने ऑलमोस्ट लाइन बाय लाइन इसको किया है अच्छा और ये बात बिल्कुल सही है कि हर ट्रांसलेशन में एक अलग रेंडरिंग होगी एक दूसरी टोनालिटी आएगी एक दूसरा कल्चरल एक्सप्रेशन आएगा वो सब होने के बावजूद दी दीज टू बुक्स are very very interconnected and daisy and i worked very closely together and also i think it was possible because the language in this is jaise aapne kaha ki ye ek to shuddh hindi bilkul nahi hai it's a very eclectic language so i think that also made it easy for her to kind of um replay and reinvent a parallel eclecticism in the english सो आई फील ऐसा ज़मीन अंतर ज़मीन आसमान का अंतर इसमें नहीं होगा छोटी सी बात है ऐसी शुरू में आपने कहा तो मुझे लगा बहुत कि बड़ी बात है इस पर हमें दोबारा आना पड़ेगा क्योंकि ट्रांसलेटेबिलिटी इट सेल्फ इज अ वेरी बिग इशू एंड एज वॉल्टर बेनिमिन सेज इन वे द आफ्टर लाइफ ऑफ अ बुक इन ट्रांसलेशन इज ग्रेटर देन इट्स लाइफ बट दैट्स नॉट द पॉइंट जो मैं कहना चाह रहा था कि जो भाषा का आविष्कार हिंदी में हमें महसूस होता है नज़र आता है वो अंग्रेज़ी में एक लिटरलिज़म है एक किस्म से जैसे आपने कहा लाइन बाय लाइन है लेकिन वो उस तरह का रस उस तरह की महक और उससे भी ज़्यादा दैट एडवेंचर दैट ऑडेसिटी यू नो वो नहीं एनी हाउ वी वोट गेट साइड ट्रैक लेकिन जैसे आपने जे में कहा कि सबसे पहले अनुभव को भाषा में लाना ही एक एक अनुवाद होता है जब आप किसी भी भाषा में लिखते हैं चाहे वो अंग्रेजी हो हिंदी हो पंजाबी हो मराठी हो तमिल हो आपका कुछ अनुभव होता है और वो आप किसी भी भाषा में उतारने की कोशिश करते हैं तो वो एक किस्म का अनुवाद ही होता है ये आपने कहा तो पहला अनुवाद वो अनुभव का भाषा में फिर वो अपनी जो ओरिजिनल मूल भाषा है उसमें से अंग्रेजी में ये दूसरा अनुवाद हम कह सकते हैं और ऐसे अनगिनत अनुवाद होते रहते हैं और हमारे यहाँ थियोरी भी है जो वाक्य पदिया जिन्होंने पढ़ा है उसमें वो परा पश्यंती मध्यमा वाइखरी जो बोली जुबान है वो तो फाइनल पॉइंट होता है जब आवाज़ निकलती है यहाँ से गले से आवाज़ निकलती है लेकिन जो उसका असली अर्थ है एनी हाउ दस वन सिंग वी वोट गेट यू नो साइड ट्रैक मतलब डेजी जी की दाद देनी पड़ेगी इतने लगन से उन्होंने किया है बहुत प्यार से किया हाँ, है मैं बहुत ही प्यार से किया है हमारे यहाँ वो वो एग्जैक्टली exactly मैं वही कहने वाला था कि हमारे यहाँ हम उतनी लगन से उतनी निष्ठा से अनुवाद भी नहीं कर पाते जैसे आपने कहा 2018 से किताब है क्यों हमारे जैसे किसी ने आके अनुवाद करने की चेष्टा क्यों नहीं की मैं अपनी बात तो नहीं कहता हूँ क्योंकि मैं अनुवाद करने के लायक नहीं हूँ मैं खुद अंग्रेजी में लिखता हूँ और क्या होता है कि मेरे हिंदी भाई बहन होते हैं वो मुझे लेखक 
के दर्जे से उतार के अनुवादक बनाना चाहते हैं तो वो एक अलग उसकी पॉलिटिक्स है उसमें नहीं जाएंगे लेकिन मैं वी विदाउट फर्दर अडू आई रियली रिक्वेस्ट यू टू रीड अ पैसेज सो दैट वी गेट अ फील ऑफ द बुक स्पेशली दो चांस टू रीड इट हिंदी और अंग्रेजी की अफसोस की बात तो है ही मिडिल क्लास जो हिंदी जानता है उसने भी मेरी किताब जो है बुगर के बाद जैसे आपने कहा जब उसका नाम हो गया तो मिडिल क्लास ने खूब पढ़ा और अंग्रेजी में ज़्यादा पढ़ा तो ये तो है ही ये अफसोस की बात है लेकिन ये ज़रूर हुआ कि बहुत से लोग कह रहे हैं कि हम हिंदी में भी पढ़ रहे हैं और कि हम तीस साल बाद हमने हिंदी की किताब एक उठाई है तो पता नहीं ये कब तक चलेगा एक धमाका होगा और बात ख़त्म हो जाएगी या आप हिंदी पढ़ना शुरू कर देंगे मालूम नहीं बहरहाल मैंने एक छोटा सा टुकड़ा निकाला है मकरन जी के ही कहने पर और आप लोगों ने जिनको मालूम है वो तो शायद पहचान ही जाएंगे पर जिन जिन्हें नहीं मालूम है उनको मैं ऐसे ही छोटा सा बता देती हूँ इसके बारे में कि इस किताब के सेटिंग जो है वो एक नॉर्थ इंडियन मिडिल क्लास फैमिली की है उसके बहाने बहुत चीज़ें शुरू होती हैं बहुत कुछ होता है बहुत कुछ नहीं होता है और एक पूरा उपन्यास तैयार हुआ है विच इज़ नॉट नेसेसरिली प्लॉट हैवी और स्टोरी हैवी एट ऑल बट आई थिंक लॉट्स ऑफ थिंग्स हैपन लॉट्स ऑफ स्टोरीज की यू नो कमिंग इन एंड गोइंग आउट एंड गेटिंग कम्प्लीटेड एंड गेटिंग लेफ्ट इन कम्प्लीट ऑल दैट हैपन्स तो ये एक छोटा सा टुकड़ा है अबाउट द फैमिलीज अबाउट पर्टिकुलरली नॉर्थ इंडियन फैमिलीज and uh, the kind of daily bickerings that go on in family uh, which often just remain at the level of kuch halki bhulki nok chhok and sometimes can con- conflagrate into big things to bas wo tukda main pad dena chahti hu ek aapko zaika is pustak ka mile कहना चाहिए परिवार को जबकि कहते हैं महाभारत को कि जो दुनिया में वो उसमें और जो उसमें नहीं वो कहीं नहीं कवि के तस्वुर में भी नहीं यानी भूला भटका आतंकवादी गर्मा भरमा वामपंथी नारीवाद और नारी हरवादी और जीती हारी सब परिवार में या महाभारत में जिसे जैसे रुचे पचे महाभारत में दुनिया दुनिया परिवार में और इसलिए परिवार में महाभारत जो रोज रोज के हंगाम हर एक एक महाभारत इसलिए परिवार के हर सदस्य को पता है कि जो मुझ में वो किसी में नहीं और जो मुझ में नहीं वो होने लायक नहीं और ये कि मेरे पास दिमाग है औरों के पास पैसा और ये कि मेरा फायदा उठाया सबने अब हम नहीं बाकी करें और ये कि हम दूर रह के भी रहम दिल तुम वही हो पर कितने बेरुखे और ये कि हमेशा हम ही देते हैं और आप हमेशा लेते हैं और वाह आपकी सूझ जिसमें आप तो मिलनसार हम वही तो मतलब ही यार आप चुप तो विनयशील हम चुप तो काइया आप करें सो शिष्टाचार वही हम करें तो लल्लो चप्पो आप कहें तो साफ गोई हम कहें वही तो बदतमीज हम पूछ लें तो अश्लील जिज्ञासा आप पूछें तो हमदर्दी हम करें तो हमारी सुविधा आप करें तो आपकी कृपा हम करें तो कंजूस आप करें तो किफायती हम चुप तो घमंडी आप चुप तो शर्मीले हम तो बड़े सीक्रेटिव पर आप तो बस रिजर्व्ड और हमारे फैशनेबल कपड़े नकल आपके जमाने से कदम ताल और हमारा गया तो हूँ ऐसा क्या बवाल आपका गया तो लुट गए हाय हाय और हमने किया तो क्या किया और आपका इरादा वो भी किया यानी हम वो जो हमने किया आप वो जो आपने सोचा और हमने कहा तो कटाक्ष आपने कहा तो मजाक और हमने अपनी बताई तो मियाँ मिट्टू आपने बताई तो सहज सत्य और हमने पा लिया तो हथियाया आपने पाया तो आपका अधिकार और हमने कहा तो हमारा गुमान आपने कहा तो आप तो हैं ही सही और हम गुस्सा आए तो ह्यूमर की कमी आप गुस्सा आए तो आत्मसम्मान और हम कर गए तो कर्तव्य था आपने किया तो बड़प्पन हुआ और हम सफल तो आपका सहारा जो मिला 
और आप असफल तो हमने अड़ंगे जो डाले और जी हम रह गए तो हम काहिल आप रह गए तो आप त्यागी और जी हम न समझे तो पैदल आप नहीं तो भोले और जी आपको हमसे वैर तो हम इसी लायक हमको आपसे वही तो हम ईर्ष्यालु और जी हमने किया तो स्वार्थ आपने वही तो परमार्थ और अगर हम ना करें तो बेपरवाह मगर आप ना करें तो मजबूरी और हमने जितना किया सो कम आपने जरा भी सो ज्यादा और हमारी नाक टेढ़ी तो बदसूरत आपकी आंख टेढ़ी तो कलात्मक और जी अपनी तस्वीर अच्छी तो फोटोग्राफ ग्राफर माहिर आपकी अच्छी तो आप सुंदर और जी हम गोरे तो छिली बटेर आप सफेद तो आप तो विलायती लगे हम काले तो बैंगन भट्ट जबकि आप काले तो ब्लैक इज ब्यूटीफुल हम मोटे तो खाऊ पेटू आप मोटे तो रौनक चमक हम दुबले तो सूखी लकड़ी आप सीख तो सौम्य सजिल और हम चलाएं एसी तो अयाश आप चलाएं तो सेहत नाजुक हम पिए तो शराबी आपने पी तो डॉक्टर की हिदायत हमारी जबान अंग्रेजी तो शो ऑफ हम आपकी तो शिक्षित आप अच्छा आपकी जरूरत तो हम एक परिवार हमारी जरूरत तो आप अलग और अकेले हम शरीफ तो मुलम्मा आप वही तो खानदानी और जी आपका काम काम और हमारा काम तमाम यस जी नो जी हम जी तुम जी और हम और तुम और तुम और हम और अम्मा और इतना हमने किया और तुम साथ हो के ना देखते और बेचारी बुढ़ा गई और पड़ी रही और अकेली और जानती भी नहीं क्या कर रही और नाम भी गलत सलत दे रही है और दिमाग पर है असर और सबके सब दौड़ पड़े I'll I'll read out the English the same passage Anything we say about the Mahabharat could also be said about families they contain all that exists in the world and whatever they don't contain doesn't exist not even in the imagination of a poet that is the gone astray terrorist the hot headed leftist the female and the feminist the other thingist and the opti pessimist all in the family or in the mahabharat whichever you prefer the world is in the mahabharat the world is in the family and thus the mahabharat is in the family the daily flare ups each one a mahabharat for this reason every member of the family knows that what exists in me exists in no one else and what does not exist in me has no call to exist and that i have the brain others have the money and that everyone has taken advantage of me so from now on i won't do anything let the rest of them do it and that i am the most tender hearted despite living far away while you are right here yet so completely inconsiderate and i am always the giver and you are always the taker and wow your wheeling dealings are just because you are such a friendly soul but if i do the same i'm cold and calculating when you are quiet you're polite but when i'm quiet i'm wily if you did it it's good etiquette if i do it's fawning flattery if you say it it's candid if i do it's just rude if i ask it's obscene curiosity when you do it's sympathy if i do it it's for my own convenience if you do it you are most beneficent if i do it i'm being stingy if you do it you are being thrifty if i am quiet i'm acting proud if you are quiet you feel bashful i'm extremely secretive but you are just reserved and my fashions are for whereas yours are cutting edge and if i lose something what's the big deal but if you do you've been robbed voice me and if i do something it amounts to nothing but your merest intention of doing something amounts to actually doing it that is i am what i've done you are what you've thought and what i said was scornful but when you said it it was just a joke when i said my piece i was being a show off but when you had your say it was the unvarnished truth and if i got it i grabbed it but if you got it it was your right and if i said it i was deluded but if you said it you were just right 
And when I get angry, I'm humorless. But when you do, it's self-respect. And when I went and did it, it was my duty. But when you did, it was big of you. And when I'm successful, I got help from you. But when you are unsuccessful, it was me who threw a spanner in the works. And if I get stuck, I'm a slacker. But if you get stuck, you blew your chances. And, oh yes, if I don't get it, I'm a moron. But if you don't, you're innocent. And, oh yes, if you are enemies with me, I deserve it. But if I am with you, I'm jealous. And, oh yes, if I did it, I'm self-serving. If you did, you're self-effacing. If, if, and if I don't do it, it's carelessness. But if you don't, it's helplessness. And however much I've done is not enough. And whatever little you did is plenty. And if my nose is crooked, it's ugly. And if your eye is crooked, it's artistic. And, oh yes, if I look good in a picture, the photographer was gifted. But if you look good, it's because you're beautiful. And, oh yes, if I'm fair, I look like a skinned quail. And if you are pale, you look like a foreigner. If I'm dark, I'm Mr. Eggplant Head. Whereas when you do, black is beautiful. If I'm fat, I'm Tubby Tupkins. If you're fat, you're pleasingly plump. If I'm thin, I'm dry as a stick. If you're skinny, you're svelte and shapely. And if I turn on the AC, I'm decadent. But if you do, you suffer from delicate health. When I drink, I'm a drunk. When you drink, doctors orders. If speak in English, I'm giving myself airs. If you do, you're educated. Oh, and if you need it, we are all one big family. But when I need it, you are separate and alone. If I'm polite, it's pretentious. If you are, it's pedigree. And yes, your work is the bee's knees, but mine's a hobby, if you please. Yes and no, no and yes, me and you, you and me and you and I and Amma, and we did so much, and you were with her, but you didn't see. And the poor thing grew older, and she lay there and alone, and didn't even know what she was doing, and she's even forgotten and inventing some imaginary name, and her memory is clearly affected, and everyone went running. So you can judge how effective the translation is, even when you translate hum into I, it changes the dynamics of, you know, hum or tum or hum or aap, hum kahe to ye, aap kahe to ye. And, but this is a wonderful passage to kind of segue into the, you know, heart of the book, which is in a sense, a book about a family and, uh, you know, parivarvad, if you want to call it as Mahabharat was. But it's also about the partition of India because the protagonist, Ma, uh, and her daughter, these are the two characters, Ma and Beti. So it's every family, you know, and the brother is a, is a big bureaucrat, big IAS type of guy with his house. And uh, so it starts like that and the refusal of the mother to participate in this sort of post-colonial world. I call it post-colonial because after the British left, a new India was created, which was also India and Pakistan. And she turns her back to the family, to the world, and faces the wall. You know, this is how the book kind of starts. And then it sort of shifts into a completely different gear from being a story of a family. It becomes the story of partitioned India. In a sense, the defining line is the idea that borders are meant to be crossed. That's the only reason that there are borders in the world. And this Ma Beti duo, they become a kind of two woman army to undo the partition, you know. And uh, eventually they land up in the Khyber Pakhtunwa region where, uh, you know, can you hear me at all yeah. at the back? Okay, thank you. Uh, so my question to you is, uh, and one little footnote, when I read this passage in Hindi, I also thought this was about colonialism. Hamartum meant, you know, when the Angres did something, it was that. When we did something, it was, you know, ugly, wicked, backward, you know, unripe cognition, superstition, whatever it is. When they did it, oh, it was refinement, civilization, you know, the white man's burden, etc. So, in a sense, the family can become a metaphor for many things. It's not just 
the poor cousins and their resentment, uh, you know, at having always to bow and scrape before the rich relatives. But something much deeper, there's a much deeper dynamic to this kind of passage, which is, you know, throughout the book, the book makes sense at many, many levels. Even the title, Ret Samadhi, you know, a tomb, you know, of sand, I mean, but the sands shift, so the samadhi shifts, the borders also shift, and the crossing is through these sandy borders, which you cannot police, etc. But because, you know, we, time is limited, I want, I, I want, I want to ask you this, uh, how do these two aspects, you know, of the book, I mean, the book about a family, a novel about the family, and suddenly this big book about a subcontinent partitioned, and uh, about the nation, as it were, the meaning of uh, what it, you know, what the nation means. How do these two aspects of the book, do you think, you know, connect? Did you always want to write this big partition book? Or somewhere along the way, you know, the project expanded, you know, from being a family narrative, which could have served as a national allegory, you know, to use Frederick Jameson's phrase, it suddenly actually became about partition. And it's still a family narrative because Ma's earlier husband is there and all she wants to do is go and find that man, you know. And it goes through Amritsar and then all the way and has a startling climax, which I won't give away. I'm not going to be the spoiler here. But seriously, did you intend for these two parts uh, to kind of um, transform from the one to the other, or it just happened as you moved along? No, I certainly did not um, have any clear intentions about writing a novel about a major theme. Actually, my way of um, writing, I think, is um, really not, almost not to care about the big subject. Rarely do I think about, uh, you know, what the big subject in this um, book is going to be or in this story is going to be. What I do like to start with is some interest and curiosity in some often very mundane event. In this case, it was the back of the, of the elderly woman, you know, her turning her back on life or on the family or on what. So it was just a very, very mundane, uh, humdrum image which we see all the time and all of us know that. And I, that image stayed with me. And what I've always found is that there is somehow, you know, the borderline between the uh, mundane and the epic is, it is just a very, very thin borderline. And I don't have to try, but like there is in this book somewhere that, you know, there's this, this, uh, there's this very small woman, she's almost 80, so she's quite short and shrunken by then. Um, there's this very small woman standing at that time of the day when the shadow is long, yeah? So, yeah, lengthens. So it is like a very small, uh, you know, image which is going into a very, very long past and history and momentous uh, events. So for me, that happens almost organically, I find. That, you know, something very small is connected to something big. The ordinary is connected to the extraordinary. So I don't have to set out and do it. I am surrounded by these stories. They're all there. I mean, I'm living in a society and a world which is, uh, you know, these stories are just simmering. And I just have to find um, the quiet and the place for the story to emerge, and it does. So it started with something very daily and mundane and started getting linked to bigger things in a very, very organic way, which brought it all together and made sense even to me. I think so, exactly, because in your short fiction, the first part is what happens. An ordinary thing starts glowing, resonating, and meaning something much more. But here, you actually, you know, work out that big story as well, which is, which is so extraordinary. So for me, it's like the Tantra, the Bindu becomes, you know, the, 
uh, entire, you know, tactile expansion of the whole cosmos, you know, Pind Brahman type of thing. But, uh, you know, they rang a bell, I don't know why, because it's just starting. But uh, it's all right, it's all right. I mean, when we cross borders and disregard, uh, uh, you know, boundaries, we should disregard a couple of bells as well. But anyhow, uh, what I wanted to say, what I, I want to come back to the, to the big theme in a manner of speaking, when the lady, when this old lady, gritty, stubborn, as many old people tend to be, turns her back to the world, it's not an ordinary turning. It's actually a satyagraha. And like Gandhi, Gandhi said, I'm not going to accept this partition. I'm not going to accept this border. Pahle maine Kolkata mein, you know, mera jo yagya tha, wo kia, fir Delhi mein, and if he had not been shot, he would have walked across the border. And this old lady does it, actually. So that Satyagraha in that little house, then she actually enacts it on, on that big, uh, as it were, screen by crossing over and doing what Gandhiji said he would do. That I will never do this to this lakir. Ko. Uh, now, but I want to ask you, <laughs> you know, there are so many things to talk about in this book. But one can, uh, you know, make this kind of criticism that isn't this a fantasy, isn't this like a romance, that you just don't accept something and it ceases to exist. Isn't it like, again, to use a metaphor that has been inspired by the book, like the ostrich which buries its head in the sand, that you're just not accepting uh, the horrors of partition. So. I mean, one of the things I found interesting is that the book does not, as it were, emphasize the trauma of partition. It's revisionist in that sense, that even the protagonist uh, is saved, she's not raped. Uh, I mean, they manage to find their way. It's, it's not that horrible doom and gloom and trauma and killing. The, there's a sense of hope that in the midst of you know, so much violence, so much hatred, ugliness. There was always space for some kindness, some compassion. People were saved. They found, uh, they found a way to, uh, you know, save themselves, save, save, them, save, save their own psyche, save their souls, so to speak. And it's that hope then, that then gets enacted. But here's my question, that is this a kind of romantic idealism uh, can one just undo, I mean, I'm saying this also because today everybody's talking about Akhanda Bharat and you ask them, how do you do it? And how do you do it without invoking Mahatma Gandhi? They have no answer because you can't conquer the territories you've lost and the book doesn't talk about conquest. Uh, you know, we are in a cantonment, but it talks about a different con kind of conquest, the conquest with love. Uh, and uh, so I wanted to ask you this, that uh, what is the solution? What is the way? Not that the novel is supposed to offer it, but care. I think I'll, I'll stop here. Go ahead. I don't know what to do. I don't think that this is a very good thing. I don't think that you have to say that you have to say that the partition is not going to be complete. मेरे ख्याल में हम सब मानेंगे और हम में से बहुत तेरे इस बात को मानेंगे कि पार्टिशन तो पूरा हुआ ही नहीं है हम न जाने कितने हैं जो आधे इधर के आधे उधर के हैं या कंफ्यूज्ड हैं खुशवंत सिंह इंक्लूडेड जो कभी उन्होंने पूरी तरह से तो नहीं माना होगा और इतने सारे जो हमारे लेखक कृष्णा सोपती भीषम सानी ऑल ऑफ देम हु फाइंड हु वॉक इनटू माय नॉवेल ऑफ देयर ओन विल एंड यू नो असर्ट देमसेल्व्स so you know ne kabhi nahi mana so that border has been created um, you know politically and forced down um, you know the two countries but do all the people accept it i think not and it is that story which is being um, repeated ad nauseum and it uh, finds its way into this book as well so i don't think there's um, I mean, I don't know why you call it um, a kind of a romantic, uh, whatever idea. It's, I think, the partition has not taken place in uh, these heads. 
It's not complete. I, I, I think I like that very much. It's not complete, but it's gone far enough it's to, done. it's, it's done. gone very far, but my real point is that... It has uh, vitiated relations, it has, um, you know, th thrown a lot of venom in the air and so on, to but, totally, I, don't, yeah, to but totally. I, don't, I don't think everybody accepts a partition. I, I agree, I agree. Let me rephrase the question then. then. I mean, it's not that we look for solutions to the world's problems in literature. We hope, actually, that literature can change things, but... We look for big ideas, and I was looking for a big idea there. And certainly one big idea is that if we don't accept it, it doesn't exist. You know, and, and when two, two women can, you know, supposedly so helpless and defenseless can do this, why can't the rest of us not do it? If thousands of people go to Vaga and just cross over, what are they going to do? Will they shoot everyone? I doubt it. So I like that idea. I like that idea of Satyagraha. But I'm still looking deeper and I see that there, what is the solution? There is a romance between a, a Hindu woman and a Muslim man. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, okay, no, I, I know, but okay, let me rephrase the question and then we throw it open to the audience. It's not that I want to reveal the plot, but I'm just trying to ask a basic question, which is even in Kushwan Singh's Train to Pakistan, it's like saying, uh, you know, Dilon ka batwara nahi hua hai. And there's a romance between uh, a Sikh in that novel and a Muslim woman. And uh, that, that love between a man and a woman, a romantic relationship in some ways, is the answer. And of course, of course a romantic relationship symbolizes all kinds of possibilities. I would never like to undermine that. But when when two people love each other deeply, then I guess nothing else matters. But when we are talking about nations and uh, the elephant in the room, we are talking about theologies, we are talking about histories of conquest, and uh, we are talking about missiles named Ghori and Ghazni and Hatf and what else? I mean, there's a whole mentality at the back of it. There's a whole ideology, and as you said, I mean, look at the investment in the partition, you know, etc. Not only the political investment, the military investment. So, my, I'll rephrase the question, okay, uh, the metaphor of love between two people, or even to say, Dilo ka batwara nahi hua hai. And I know, if we go across, they're so hospitable. But, what is, I mean, what is the big idea? What, is there any, what are the steps, other than, uh, you know this this notion that the partition is incomplete and therefore can be reversed. Is there another big idea there? Makran, I don't think I can answer this question in this way. But this is true. If the nation uh, if the nation stands for this, then it makes absolute sense that art and literature and people are not standing for that nation. I think that is absolutely there and it is, there, there seem to be two forces, you know, in opposite directions. One, um, you know, art and literature is not dividing the two countries at all. In fact, something else happens every now and again, there's intervention of another kind which tries to divide that um, unity. And I think these are working um, parallelly and trying to cut each other. Or, hua hai dunya mein aisi cheeze hui hai ki partitions hue hai aur mit bhi gaye hai yahaan ho sakta hai ki nahi mein kya umeed to hum bhi rakhte hai bilkul, mein bilkul aap se sahamat hu wo nahi keh raha chara mein sirf ye keh raha tha ki dekhiye kya steps hai kya nahi steps yani dekhiye Germany ka kaise hua ki jo vichardara thi ideology thi एक तरह सोशलिज्म या कम्युनिज्म कहिए दूसरी तरह कैपिटलिज्म उसमें जो दरार थी वो टूट गई तो वही मैं कहना चाह रहा था कि कहीं उसके चिन्ह बट आई आई एंडोर्स व्हाट यू सेड बट सी व्हाट हैपेंड विद उर्दू आई मीन जुबान को कैसे काटा गया उर्दू में द प्रोग्रेसिव्स वन द लिटरेरी वॉर आई मीन वो सब जगह छा गए यू नो फ्रॉम मांटो इस्मत चुक्ताई ऑल ऑफ देम 
uh, Rashid Jahan, we know, we know them, Kurtule and Haider, but they lost the narrative. The Muslim League won. I mean, they won the literary war, but they lost the battle to keep India united. But on that wonderfully, I won't call it anti-nationalist note, but uh, I'll now throw it open to the audience for a couple of questions. And please, I want to give priority to those who have read the book. The first questions will be asked by those who have read the book. The lady, please, in the shades, who ho is holding up the book as a flag. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. Hi, Gitanjali. Uh, well, this is a bit of a well, lie because my mother, who's 82 years old, she's read the book and she has a message for you. I just got my hands on the book about three days ago. So I've just read a few, the first few chapters of where Ma keeps saying, no, 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 she doesn't want to get off the bed. So what my mother said is she loved what you had written about Swach Bharat. She loved what you had written about the Parliament of Crows. She loved that. And also the reference you gave to saris. How come you know so much about those saris? And she said she's, it's something like we have in our army's ladies club. We have paper games where you got to name saris from all over India. So what was that reference? I mean, these are some interesting things that she brought out. And she's marked them here at the back. And she said, you must ask Kitanjali about all that. Some expand on that. अब साड़ीज का मतलब इतनी हैरानी की बात क्यों है भाई हमारे यहाँ साड़ी तो सभी पहनते मेरे माँ मेरे पूरे परिवार में मैं कम पहनने लगी हूँ साड़ी लेकिन साड़ियों के कल्चर में ही मैं भी पली बड़ी हूँ और we take great pride in the kinds of sarees there are in India you know and we may live in any one part of India but we know about sarees from all over India and we all um, delight in having, you know, saris from different parts of India. So, <coughs> for me, the crows and the sari is actually, I mean, I think it became a, a very fun scene. I don't know where, how it all um, developed. It just kept happening and I also started enjoying it very much. And I think uh, the saris, uh, it symbolized the... Um, the mother that uh, the elder son, you know, could see as the mother. So if you want to read deep messages into it, then you can talk of the patriarchal, you know, um, son who belongs to a patriarchal society and who thinks, you know, mother is mother only in a sari and he's remembering all the beautiful saris she used to wear, some of which he had brought, some his father had brought. And uh, he cannot quite um, um, accept the mother who today is giving up her saris and wearing, you know, this loose, shapeless jhabla because she thinks it's um, very comfortable and she can feel free in it. So I think the two garments here, the free, shapeless jhabla has other implications, you know, about freeing the woman from her body in a sense. And the sari is something else, you know, which keeps um, uh, the sari in the way. The crows uh, and the crows uh, learn about it, and um, Bade, the sun is remembering them, are something which are really uh, adorning a certain image of the traditional mother figure. So, SI kuch ban gaya. You know, I just want to add a little note. You cheated a bit, but anyhow, it was on behalf of your mother, so. But you know, this is a this is an intensely feminist book. Though I don't like that label. It's it's all about yeah. It's all about maybe womanist by feminist, but it's all about women breaking out of all kinds of impositions. You know, and the woman who is uh, framed as desirable, as marriageable, as a mother, then a crone. You know, all so. these phases and both both. Beti and Ma, they refuse, they say nothing doing, do not put us into these boxes. And gradually, in a way, they also start liberating other people around them. But the reason I wanted to intervene is only to say that if you read this novel, it also teaches you how to write a big book. In a way, it's like, 
It's so. like Moby Dick because you put in everything. It's an encyclopedia. You know, whatever you know, you just put it in. And it just grows and grows and grows, you know. So uh, we have a question from an yeah. English reader. No, but I why are you have... taking over my job? I noticed somebody else oh, earlier. I Malavika, have... I'll come to you. I, but I, I still said, anybody who's read the book, please. And no I cheating. Have... Yeah. Anyone who's I read have... the book in Hindi first. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, you. Who did? Sorry, who did you? No, the, the lady who's read it in Hindi. And then, of English. course, I would never... Uh, bypass uh, or overlook. All, uh, no, yes, go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, yeah Gitanjali Shri, I would like to congratulate you uh, for writing this great book. Ma'am, just a uh, question, please. I have read this book in Hindi. No and lecture, I found lecture. it very abstract first. The uh, first chapter I had to read a few times. I had to read a few times. I had to read two sentences. Ma'am, please, please. Ma'am, please, please. I'm just please. coming to that. Like I just want to know that you have given another dimension to wall, for example, and to uh, the door also. And uh, you have written this book in a very unconventional way. Like towards the end, you know, you have uh, mentioned ki uh, jaise ye dono uh, maa aur beti ne dono apne role matab interchange kar liye. जो बेटी है उसने माँ की जगह ले ली एंड माँ ने बेटी की जगह ले ली एंड बिकॉज द मदर डेवलप्ड सम जेस्ट फॉर लाइफ एंड बेटी हु वॉज वेरी यू नो एंथुजियास्टिक एंड शी वॉज अ जर्नलिस्ट तो शी बिकेम वेरी यू नो सब्ड एंड यू हैव मैंशन आई जस्ट बिकॉज दैट वॉज स्टिल नहीं बट हाउ डिड यू हाउ डिड यू राइट यू नो हाउ डिड यू लाइक यू हैव मैंशन अबाउट कि उसकी लाइक दे डेंट हैव एनी अदर वे टू ग्रूम देमसेल्स तो कि उसकी लाइक मॉस्टेसिस आ गई जब वो पाकिस्तान में थी तो लाइक वाज इट इंटेंशनल लाइक यू वांटेड टू राइट इन सच एन अनकंवेंशनल वे और इट वाज यू नो इट जस्ट फ्लोड थैंक यू थैंक यू आई आई टेक मालविकास क्वेश्चन इस वेल थैंक यू सो मच um, I read the book in English. Uh, there's a lot of vivacity and fun and humor. Was the writing process also so much fun or was it labored? And did it just flow because the book flows? No, it flowed uh, in general. I mean, I think the writing process, I think uh, most uh, um, artists and um, writers would uh, perhaps agree with me that the fun is really in the process you know uh, unless they have some agenda you know that this is what they're trying to do and this is the conclusion they're trying to reach and uh, have they managed it or not then their uh, whole agony is different but otherwise the fun is in the process and the process is what what will lead to the you know whole structure you know so i think um, certainly there, there was uh, fun and flow, but that does not mean that there were not uh, blocks, that there were not times when one didn't, you know, when one didn't feel, when one felt uh, stuck and didn't know quite how to proceed. And I, I took a long time, eight or nine years, to write this book, and. Uh, methodology, I don't even, you know, because I don't work with a uh, with a formula and an agenda. You know, somebody put it very well once. A friend of mine said it. I'm sorry if it sounds grand, but I'm going to say it since it's coming to me. She said that, you know, you're completely audacious. And that audacity comes from the fact that you are not looking for spectacular success. And you're not scared of spectacular failure. And I'm sorry I remembered it, but I really thought she, she sort of pointed it out to me. And that gave me a freedom, you know. So I was just, uh, ha I was not in any hurry. Eight years, nine years, nine years, nine years, nine years, nine years, nine years, and um, what it's going to become, nine years, nine years, nine years. But I could just go on, and that is how I went on, and it kept um, happening. I think that so, it, it one second, it demonstrates, it really demonstrates the vocation of writing, which requires a fearlessness and not approval seeking, you know. 
and years of sadhana. Raja Rao used to say, writing is a sadhana. So I see that, and I also wanted to say that uh, the humor, the fun, I mean, love is not the only way to undo the partition. It's also humor. It's also fun. We, we can't get so serious and morose all the time. And uh, the other lady, she made an important point. Doors and windows, you know, very, very crucial as symbols in the book. Because the Betty jumps out of a window because she's trying, they, they lock her into the house. So, no, that's okay. Everybody will forget. Don't worry. Don't tell me what to do. At least people will think about doors and windows in their life. What I want to say to you is if a door slams on you, don't give up. Use the window and get out. Anyhow, so, so I think we're running out of time. Can, can, and uh, can just, I just a moment. Just, 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 uh, just one just moment. One no, no, wait a moment. Wait, wait a moment. What we're going to now do is have a very quick round of three questions. I saw three people. And uh, so if you have anything really, really burning to ask, ask now yes. or forever hold your peace. Yes. So, so one minute. I, I, I didn't notice you first, sir. I noticed yes. the lady in the pink first, then my friend at the back from NDTV, two, and this three. No, but think, only uh, questions, please. No little lectures. Ask a question. If your question is not ready, I'll come back to you. So Makran, only questions. Makran, actually, we, do, we, we can relax a little. We don't have to like, totally oh, stress the time. Lovely, lovely. So let, let us choose the three you've chosen. Okay. So please ask questions. Anyhow, I hold to my caveat. Ask a question, not commentary, please. Just a question. Frame a question. As a teacher, this is a challenge for all of you. Frame a question. No, frame a question. People uh, don't know how to frame a yes. question. Yes. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, thank you for this lovely book. Uh, my question is that uh, when you were writing this book, were you consciously making it women-centric? Because women and nation have a very fraught relationship, as so many of our partition uh, writing has shown us. In fact, as Virginia Woolf said, women have no country. And uh, this whole question of belonging is very, very important. So did you have all these things in your mind as you sa uh, sat down to write? Thank you. Shall we take three at a time? I don't know. I don't know. If you ask me this question, I will give you the answer to that I do I write, there's a serendipity kafi rehti hai mere usme. Women, it's very natural for women to come into the world. Yeah? Women, hum sab, hum sab ki zindagi mein women hi women hai. Aur um, umid hai ki mere jaise log aur aur bhi log, they have a particular sort of sensitivity towards women. To wo aati hai, khas uh, feeling ke saath aati hai. Aur um, badi badi usme protagonist ban jati hai. But I also feel that in this book, uh, Bade, the son, has a very special, you know, place and very few people talk about him. Because I think, aap log women-centric bahut zada hain. Yeah, but, but I guess the point, no, no, please, no follow-ups. The point is really that men make nations and women can undo them. Sir, at the back over there, Arish, no? Okay, next, who was the person here? Yeah, I noticed you, go ahead. Sit down, madam. I noticed someone else before you. Please sit down. I'll give you a chance. Don't worry. Please. Uh, I have two questions. One was that you're an accomplished English writer also. And this book has a lot of uh, very free-flowing Hindi. So why did you choose to trust someone else to do the translation and not do it yourself? What makes you think I'm an accomplished English writer? I, I read it all over the internet and... Uh, no, no. The inter no. Internet, oh, internet trust is the... Internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's just okay. lying through its teeth, if it has teeth at all. But uh, um, I'm not an accomplished uh, English uh, writer. Or Angrezi, we have to say that 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 we have so I will do translation that day, which day I will not have more to write. Yeah, that's a good point. Actually, she's very modest, and but I think... Aap second, nahin, that's it, that's it, no, no, please. No, 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 others have questions. Uh, the lady in blue, yes. And then you, ma'am. 
Hello. No, no, next. I'm so glad I read your book. Uh, initially, it was a little difficult, but later it became very interesting and very fast-paced. And I enjoyed the fact that, just want to know, how did you write about the crows? That was no, immensely... Please. No, but I would still, was it imagination or something else that came to you about it? Kauwe, kauwe, itne humare chaaro aur ghoomte rehte hain. Kauwo ko dekh ke mera imagination bhoot khush hua, chalne laga. Kisse dosti kare, kauwe hi bache hain, kauwe aur kabutar. Mohi milte hain. Kasoli mein hum rehte nahi hain ki kuch achhi dousri chidya hain. I'm so glad that finally I've been noticed by the interlocutor. I had, I'm not qualified to give a comprehensive question because I've only read 100 pages. But I know that you did a PhD on Prem Chand. So uh, do you think you've been influenced by uh, the realism that you have and the strong characterization that you have? Have you been influenced by Prem Chand? And one last statement about translation. Nothing improves by translation except bishops, but you have belied the sardonic comment. Thank you. Um, see, a, a critic w um, would be able to answer um, the question about whether I've been influenced by Prem Chand's, um, you know, social realism and uh, um, strong characterization. I, I really don't know. But uh, um, as far as I can judge, my writing is very different from Prem Chand's. So, I wouldn't even have put myself in the category of social realistic writing. So I'm surprised that you said that. So, yes. okay. Prem Chand yeah. doesn't do magical yeah, realism. He is very simple okay. and straightforward yeah. in a, this, and some wonderful novel. things he's written in that. So I really don't see the link, but then I'm not the best person to be able to evaluate yeah. yes. you know, my the, writing yeah, in that the, sort of way. So, uh, Thank you so a, much. Yeah, we have yes. another, sir, yes. Uh, the yes. gentleman in the green uh, turban, yes honest, sir. Yes, honest sir. confession is I haven't read the book, but the partition is very close to my, subject, uh, my studies. So my question is that how you see the relations and memories when you cross borders, relations? You, have, uh, you only have that relations and memories with you. How you see the role of relations and memories to transcend the borders? Relations or memories are always growing up in life. There is always a memory. If you say what you say, I remember that it becomes a memory, then I can answer it. Memory is a very big role in it. Yes, the relations and love and love are the same. What do I say more than that? Very big, very big. So, yes, the relations and love are the same. It's my privilege, it falls upon me, because Ashima was called away, so I'm so uh, happy. Though I feel sort of that the use of words now feels almost superfluous after listening to you read. I just want to say a big thank you for being here, for being at the Ksali Literature Festival, for being in the Punjab, for writing about partition, and um, thank you very much, and thank you, Makran, for leading us through the book and be keeping us safe, not losing the plot. Rahul? Yeah. I'd just like to say that uh, the army has been good enough to end, let us end this literary festival. And please see at the last session what a large audience you've got. So as I was saying, the army has been good enough to give us 10 minutes of their band. Uh, yeah. So we'll be hearing the band for 10 minutes. And this is actually our, my, and the organizer's personal tribute to you, Gitanjali Shri. Thank you. Oh.
Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the first display of evening with a traditional song, Dal Dal Pe Sone Ki Chidiya. The composer of this song, Mohammad Rafi, and this tune has been taken from the movie Sikandar e Azam. The song represents India, the golden bird, why rivers flow from north to south and east to west, why truth, non violence, and region reside at every step. The tune is Dal Dal Pe Sone Ki Chidiya. Our next tune for the evening is Vijay Bharat. The tune is playing during quick march and parades. This song was composed by Honorary Captain Jamal Singh for the military band. The tune is Vijay Bharat. Our next performance is a powerful quick march composition, The Glandural Highlanders, composed by Duncan Pitok. The tune brings out the spirit of the soldier, ready to fight for his motherland. The tune is The Glandural Highlanders.
The next tune represents the high heritage and value of music in Indian culture. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the tune Brahmaputra. For our final performance of the evening, we have a classical composition based on the famous Scottish pipe tune, The Hog That Soups on High. This song represents the Battle of Soman Heights of Dergai. This tune was composed by Major John Mackey. The tune is The Hog That Soups on High. I hope you all enjoyed the beautiful tune played by the Shivani Battalion Pipe Band. I request all of you to give a round of applause to the Pipe Band. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thank you very much. It's an honor to have the band, army band playing here. And we presented you with Gitanjali Shri's book as a thank. Yeah, OK. Thank you very much. Yeah. 
या प्लीज या गीतांजलि श्री इज वेरी मच हेयर आई नो देर लॉट्स ऑफ पीपल विद हर बुक हु वॉन्ट हर टू साइन इट बट इफ इफ पीपल कुड जस्ट सिट डाउन बिकॉज जस्ट फाइव मिनट्स ऑफ मी थैंकिंग एवरीबडी हुज मेड दिस लिटरी फेस्टिवल पॉसिबल yeah i think gitanjali can continue signing this but i'll uh, meanwhile like to uh, uh, you know no no that's okay yeah <laughs> so uh, uh huh yeah who's playing the powerpoint